the 1999-2000 season came to a close, the WB's declining the ratings from 5th place to 6th place behind rival UPN. Executives at the WB attributed the decline due to the fact the large part by the decision made by WGN-TV, Chicago's WB affiliate, to remove WB programming off of the Superstation feed carried nationally outside the Chicago area via cable and satellite, which reduced WB's availability of households audience by 10 million homes. The WB also pointed out the network's decline when Carrie Russell decided to cut her long hair off to a short hairdo which led to a ratings decline on the network's hit show Felicity. The WB began to announce their upcoming 2000-2001 season on May 17, 2000, in which the time came for renewals and new shows. However, two of the comedy shows, movie stars, and Zoe Duncan, Jack and Jane would not be returning for the 2000-2001 season. And the WB's fall 2000 schedule for Monday and Wednesday remained The WB changed. Monday night consisted of 7th Heaven followed by Roswell. The WB's new Tuesday consisted of Buffy the Vampire Slayer followed by the spinoff series Angel. The WB Wednesday consisted of Dawson's Creek and Felicity. The WB Thursday night, Charmed remained on its 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Central Time time slot. However, preceded Charmed at the 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time time slot would be a new drama comedy from Warner Brothers Television called Gilmore Girls, which starred Alexis Bledel and Lauren Graham. The WB Friday night had a major change. Sabrina the Teenage Witch will begin its fifth season on the WB. Sabrina the Teenage Witch had ended its fourth season run on ABC. Being one of the highest rated shows on ABC's TGIF lineup, ABC was willing to renew Sabrina the Teenage Witch for a fifth season, but didn't want to pay $1.5 million per episode that Fightcom Productions wanted, and the WB picked up the show for $675,000 per episode with a commitment of 66 episodes. The WB will air Sabrina at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, followed by a new comedy from Darren Starr and Columbia TriStar Television called Gross Point, will air at the 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 7.30 p.m. Central Time time slot, and Popular, which aired on Thursday nights, would move to Friday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Central Time, airing after Sabrina and Gross Point. The WB Sunday lineup would consist of hit comedy shows, The Jamie Foxx Show, For Your Love, as well as The Steve Harvey Show, would be joined by two new comedies. One of them was called Hype, which was the WB's answer to NBC's Saturday Night Live and Nikki, a comedy star Nikki Cox, as well as The PJs, which previously aired on Fox. Jack and Jill would return as mid-season in January 2001 on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Central Time, when Felicity takes a hiatus. The WB summer schedule consisted of repeats. Two series premiered on the WB that summer. One of the series was Young Americans, which originally was supposed to be a mid-season show in the 1999-2000 season but was put on hold until Coca-Cola offered to sponsor the show. Young Americans was a spinoff of Dawson's Creek since the main character of the show, Real Krudusky, was introduced in the 19th season of the third season of Dawson's Creek, Stolen Kisses, as the childhood friend of Dawson, Joey, and Pacey, who came to visit and later kept in contact with Pacey. Young Americans premiered on July 20th, 2000 at the 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Central Time time slot, where repeats of Dawson's Creek aired between June 28, 2000 and July 5, 2000, since Felicity took a hiatus. Another show that premiered on the WB in the summer of 2000 was an animated series called Baby Blues, which was based off of the comic book strips. Baby Blues premiered on July 28, 2000. The WB had ordered 13 episodes of Baby Blues, but sadly only 8 episodes of Baby Blues aired and was canceled by the WB, leaving 5 episodes on air until Cartoon Network's nighttime block, Adult Swim, picked it up in January 2002, airing the final 5 episodes. Young Americans met the same fate when the last episode will Bella Scout Her Mom aired August 30th, 2000. The episode served as an introduction for the fall 2000 season, but sadly the WB canceled Young Americans before episodes could be produced. As the network began to prepare 
Their Fall 2000 lineup repeats of the previous seasons of Seven Heaven Beginnings that aired at the 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Central Time to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time time slot since the 1998-1999 season was replaced by repeats of For Your Love at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Central Time, and The Jamie Foxx Show at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Since Paramount Domestic Television, who distributed Seven Heaven on rerun, rerun syndication, And Seven Heaven began its off-network syndication run on September 25, 2000, via local stations and the national cable feed of WGN, known at the time as WGN Entertainment America. Ironically, Seven Heaven aired on first-run form on WGN when the show premiered on the WB in August 1996 until October 7, 1999 when WGN ceased to carry the WB affiliation on its national superstation feed outside the Chicago area. Seven Heaven, along with three other WB network programming such as Sister Sister, The Parenthood, as well as The Rains Brothers to air both in first run broadcast and off network syndication on the national WGN carried on satellite and cable outside of Chicago. Kids WB had also gotten new shows that season such as Generation O, Static Shocks, X-Men Evolution, Jackie Chan Adventures, as well as returning shows like Batman Beyond, Men in Black, and Max Steel. WB kicked off its Fall 2000 schedule with season premieres as well as premieres of new shows. Beginning with the WB Friday night on September 22, 2000 with the season premiere of Sabrina the Teenage Witch followed by the series premiere of Gross Point and the season premiere of Popular. Followed by the WB New Tuesday on September 26, 2000 with the season premiere of Buffy the Vampire Slayer followed by the season premiere of the spinoff Angel. And the rest of the new seasons began on the first week of October with the season premieres of Seven Heaven and Roswell on Monday, October 2nd, 2000, followed by the season premieres of Dawson's Creek and Felicity on October 4th, 2000. And the WB Thursday kicked off with the series premiere of Gilmore Girls and the season premiere of Charmed. The WB Sunday kicked off its premiere night on October 8th, 2000 and was dubbed as the WB's Hype Night, beginning with the season premiere of The Jamie Foxx Show and the season premiere of For Your Love, with the new season of The PJs, followed by the series premiere of Hype and Nikki. The WB ordered 13 episodes for Smallville, which was the working title, The Teenage Clark Kent Project, to air in the 2001-2002 season. Around the same time, the WB allowed their affiliates to air Sunday night lineup one hour later than usual. 44 of the WB affiliates decided to do so. In many markets, most of the WB affiliates aired syndicated programming on Sundays before their primetime lineup. However, many WB affiliates that carried a secondary affiliation with UPN aired many of UPN's programming on overnight hours and some on Sunday nights since UPN didn't have a Sunday night program. At the same time, News Corporation, the then owners of Fox Broadcasting and 20th Century Fox Film Corporation, had purchased Chris Craft Industries in August 2000. Shortly after, Chris Craft sold us 50% of UPN to Bicom in March of that same year. And because of it, many of the UPN affiliates owned by United Television, like KCOP and WWOR, as well as WUTB in Baltimore, which Chris Craft bought in 1998, shortly after WNUB 54 switched their affiliation with the WB, lost their UPN owned and operated status, and thus becoming sister stations to Fox affiliates, with the exception of one of the United Television owned stations, KBHK 44 in San Francisco, California, which Fox would give it to Vicom in exchange for KTXH 20 in Houston, Texas, and WDCA. 
20 in Washington, D.C. in July 2001. Due to the result, KTXH and WDCA became sister stations to Fox affiliates WTTG5 and KRIV26. And KBHK44 regained their UPN owned and operated status. UPN also picked up comedy series The Hughleys, which starred D.L. Hughley for the 2000 2001 season, shortly after ABC canceled it at the end of the 1999 2000 season. UPN aired The Hughleys on Mondays with Moesha and the Parkers, as well as the new series Girlfriends. Gilmore Girls' first season netted meager ratings on the WB Thursday night, despite airing right before Charm. The WB has improved itself since its launch with seven nights of programming and kids programming. They had a great season. In January 2001, a reality competition series called Pop Stars, which was an American adaptation of the New Zealand series of the same name, premiered on January 12th with a one-hour special. The first season focused on creating a five-girl group similar to Making a Band, which premiered on ABC in 2000 and later moved to MTV. This was done to compete with the reality shows that were dominated television viewers like Survivor on CBS and MTV's The Real World. Around the same time, Pop Stars premiere was when Jack and Jill returned to begin its second season on January 10, 2001. Aired on the WB Wednesday night at the 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Central Time time slot, where Felicity aired. Once Jack and Jill concluded their 13-episode run, Felicity was to return on April 18, 2001. The WB began to prepare for the 2001-2002 season. On January 10, 2001, Five months before Buffy the Vampire Slayer concluded its fifth season and aired its 100th episode, contract negotiation renewals between the WB and 20th Century Fox Television for Buffy the Vampire Slayer's future two seasons and 44 episodes were not looking well. Despite Buffy the Vampire Slayer being one of the successful shows on the WB, Joss Whedon, the creator of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and the spinoff Angel, had wanted an increase of $2.3 million per episode from the WB, and the WB's only offer was $1.8 million. Due to the fact that Joss Whedon didn't see eye to eye with the WB for the salary increase, Joss began looking for other networks to pick up Buffy for two more seasons and 44 episodes. The obvious choice was likely Fox Broadcasting. Had Buffy the Vampire Slayer moved to Fox, it would be a success, but it would look bad on 20th Century Fox television. And to complicate matters even more, it was also around the same time that the merger between the WB Network's owners Time Warner and AOL was completed on January 11, 2001 and was re branded as AOL Time Warner six years after the WB launched. It wasn't until April 23rd, 2001, when it was announced that Buffy the Vampire Slayer would move to UPN for the 2001-2002 season. UPN offered the $2.3 million and Joss Whedon agreed, placing a 44-episode order for two seasons worth the series. And the fate for the Buffy the Vampire Slayer spinoff series, Angel, was unknown. And although UPN agreed to pay $1 million an episode for two years, but only if the WB cancels Angel. 20th Century Fox Television, the studio that produces Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel, as well as another series, Roswell, insists the move was solely about the economics of the program. While the WB cried foul, insisted that 20th Century Fox Film Corporation have an agenda shortly after News Corporation's acquisition of Chris Craft, in which markets like Los Angeles, New York, Baltimore, and San Francisco, as well as Portland, are UPN affiliates owned by United Television and the WB suggests News Corp purchase some or all UPN affiliates in the future. However, the WB kept Angel and the WB announced that the fifth season finale of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which was the 100th episode of the series, would air May 22nd, 2001. But shortly after the airing of the 19th episode of the fifth season, the WB had aired a promo saying three episodes left until the WB series finale. Counting down to the 100th episode, the WB was not happy at the decisions that one of its hit shows 
was moving to rival UPN for the 2001-2002 season. To add insult to injury, the WB scraped plans to run advertisement for the 100th episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and removed promotional photos off the WB's website and rather calling the gift a season finale they never instead called it the WB series finale. Also, Sarah Michelle Gillar, the star of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, was not happy with the show's move to UPN, mainly due to the fact that she was loyal to the WB and said she would leave Buffy the Vampire Slayer if the show left the WB. However, Sarah Michelle Gillar was bound to her seven-year contract on the show. The WB ended up canceling another 20th Century Fox television produced series Roswell and on May 16, 2001 it was announced that UPN had picked up 22 episodes of Roswell which were aired Tuesday nights after Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Since the WB didn't run advertisements for the 100th episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer on the night it aired May 22, 2001 knowing that the show would be moving to rival UPN for the 2001-2002 season. Instead, after the airing of the fifth season finale of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the WB left a message saying, Five great years. We thank you. Also, it was around the same time Charmed ended its third season, and Shannon Dorothy had left the show due to conflict with co-star Alyssa Milano. However, the WB revealed at an upfront presentation for the 2001-2002 season that Gilmore Girls would move to Tuesday nights during the network's fall 2001 lineup. At the same upfront, the WB had planned that their Wednesday night movies, known as Flicks from the Frog, would instead air on Tuesday nights, beginning with the air of the TV movie Witchblade on May 9, 2001. Prior to Flicks from the Frog, during the WB's early days, many of its WB affiliates aired movies on nights when WB didn't have any program. However, from the fall of 1999 until the network's closure in September 2006, WB affiliates aired movies Saturday afternoons and nights as well as Sunday afternoons. It was announced that Angel would move to WB Monday nights after 7 Heaven for the fall. So on June 4, 2001, Angel moved to Mondays, replacing Roswell, which the WB didn't air repeats over the summer, while Buffy the Vampire Slayer, however, would air on the WB Wednesday night after Dawson's Creek while Felicity took a summer hiatus, as well as on the WB Sunday night shortly before the comedy hour. Also, the Jamie Foxx show had ended its five-season run and was in reruns during the summer of 2001. Hype and Gross Point, as well as Popular and Jack and Jill, was canceled and wouldn't be returned for the 2001-2002 season. A mid-season show called Dead Last premiered on August 14, 2001, aired on the WB New Tuesday after Gilmore Girls, but was sadly canceled after eight episodes. By the end of August 2001, repeats of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which aired on the WB Wednesday nights, as well as the WB Sunday nights had ended and Buffy the Vampire Slayer went into syndication in September 2001 and weekdays Monday through Friday on cable channel FX and on weekends via local stations. With Buffy beginning its sixth season on another network in the fall 2001 season rolling around the corner, would the WB survive without one of its highest rated shows that put the network on the map? Stay tuned for part four if you haven't seen the first two parts of the rise and fall of the WB Check him out. And don't forget to subscribe.